CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four. The NCAA tournament continues. Second round action from the land of Laverne and Shirley in Milwaukee in what has been a first time in tournament history will face the Kansas Jayhawks in March Madness. By virtue of knocking off Villanova, the Spartans await Oklahoma in the round of 16. They've already punched their ticket. Hello again, everyone. Coming up, they have never, never met in the NCAA tournament until today. Billy Packer, Jim Nance with you. And uh, Billy, let's face it, you and I would get so excited about the history of the game and these two programs. This feels like a Final Four right here, doesn't it? Well, you think about Fog Allen, the, you know, the kind of the guy created things there at Kansas. Adolph Ruck came from Kansas, the number one winning team of all time. Number two is, is the University of North Carolina, Dean Smith. Number three, Kansas itself. Heavyweights of college basketball, rich in tradition. Going on the line, can you imagine? This is just the second round. It's amazing. They did meet earlier this year, this season, December the 1st, in Chicago. Now, Shimu Evans had 11 points, 11 rebounds, but this man, Wayne Turner, who will break a record here today, playing in this 149th game. He led the Cats with 14 points, and they blitzed. They blitzed Kansas, holding the Jayhawks to only 29% from the field. That was the lowest scoring game ever in the, in the grade eight. And how about these coaches, Roy Williams and Tubby Smith, their thoughts on this matchup today. Well, they handled us pretty easily when we played in the grade eight early in the year, and it's an 18-point game, and it really wasn't that close. So we've got a major challenge to make sure that our kids think they can beat them. They're a much different team than, than when we played them back in December. They're much improved. They, um, they seem to be much more physical, um, and that was probably one of the worst games that a Roy Williams coach team had played. We didn't play particularly well either, so it wasn't a very pretty game. Wasn't a pretty game, but this Kansas team certainly has been upgraded since that time, relying on a freshman point guard who has certainly grown here in the last month, Jeff Bochy. What a difference from December the 1st when they last met, Billy, if we look but, at their lineups. Jim, I saw them play early in, in uh, December as well, and Bochy was just then learning the ropes of playing a point guard position. Been a great scorer in high school, but entirely different responsibility when you're back there handling the ball all the time. Look at Tubby Smith, second season. He's never lost in the tournament as the Wildcat coach winning the championship, directing them to that title in San Antonio a year ago. Scott Padgett was the MVP of the SEC tournament, and there it is, Wayne Turner moves past Christian Leitner, and this ball goes in the air. He'll be the most experienced college player of all time. Who would have thought it? Second round, Kansas and Kentucky for the first time ever in the NCAA tournament. How about that? Bradley out jumps Chenoweth. The interesting battle inside today between those two centers, both sophomores, Bradley and Chinoweth of Kansas. Here's Scott Padgett, loves this shot. In and out, and Chinoweth had position. Jim, I think this game sends more about where college basketball is now than anything that's happened in the tournament. And the fact that you see the Southwest Missouris and people advancing, you see the balance in college basketball. No longer do the power programs rule the game. Bochy, there's the freshman, three-pointer. And got the Jayhawks, great. yep, he's Cons got a, he liked that release, huh? Consecutive streak going on those three-point shots. He's got his hands full here, though, with Turner. You talked about his experience, a very difficult guy to guard on those penetration moves. Gets it away by Pugh, and he lifts it ahead to Robertson. Five, nothing, Kansas at the start. Jim Allison, who has been very consistent with his play in all phases, was fell asleep there and just let Robinson break away from him. Kansas, as everybody knows, a much better defensive team now than they were back in December. Ball tipped and last touch by Kansas. Yes, Bill, you talk about the, well, the way the tournament shapes up in the regional round. We do have the Southwest Missouri States in there. Congratulations to Steve Alford, Gonzaga, Miami University. Some names we're unaccustomed to seeing in that round. Good blocking out that time. Both of these teams hold opponents down under 40. For Kansas, 38%. For Kentucky, 37%. So it's hard to get points against them. Allison thought about stepping back for the three. A quick can a Kentucky passing yields a basket inside by Allison. Padgett, very good assist turnover ratio. That, that was his 92nd assist on the year. He's only turned it over 61 times for a power forward. That's excellent. Robinson, they get across that midcourt pressure, and they'll go to the line as Evans called for the block. 
tournament appearances, Kentucky, well, they have the record for not only tournament appearances, but tournament overall victories. And well, there's, com combined, there's some heavyweights, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> combined, these two programs have won nine national titles, 3,434 victories overall, and 23 Final Four appearances. And, um, and, and that's what makes it all the more amazing, Jim, that they have never faced each other in an NCAA tournament. I mean, you think about, well, Kentucky and Utah having met the last three years, and they were what some thought were on a collision course to make it four straight years. Not going to happen now with the Utes eliminated today. But how that could happen three straight years, four times in the 90s, and never these two tackling in a Final Four or anywhere. Badgett, both teams kind of mirrored, mirroring themselves in regard to how they're playing defense. Picking up full court, and there's Evans on the medium range jumper that he likes. Kentucky picking up full court, and you know what this means. They're going to be coming with that second five sometime early in this first half. They're going to try to wear down and turn it into two complete games, different games. Play you the first half to keep it tight, then wear you out for the second. Chinna with one bounce, loses control of it on the way up, and then gets hacked. Kentucky can go 10 deep. Kansas really plays about eight, eight in the lineup. Now, some of you will be uh, shortly uh, being sent to the Purdue-Miami game in that wild, wild East bracket that has already seen Duke advance today in Southwest Missouri State. They will meet in the Sweet 16, and Temple eliminating Cincinnati. And Jim, you see that juggernaut uh, of Duke University, and you start thinking of teams and styles that could beat them. I really felt in Cincinnati, I didn't feel could play six games because of their backcourt shooting. I didn't think they could play six games and have it going for them all six. But I thought if they ever got to face Duke, it might be one of those kind of games where they got backcourt scoring. But they'll never find out this year because of that outstanding zone defense that Temple plays. They just couldn't get by it. This is Greg Gumbel in New York. Those of you awaiting the tip of 10th seed Purdue against second seed Miami of Florida in the Fleet Center in Boston, your time has come. We'll take a time out and then we'll send you to Boston to join Craig Bowlerjack and Rolando Blackman right after this. In their win over Evansville, Kansas, which won't happen today, out-rebounded Evansville, 45 rebounds to 15, and Kansas shot 63%. Total dominance in that game on their part. Bradford over to Chinaway. Nice. Banks at home. Good pass, too. The Bradford. assist by Bradford. Bradford was 7 for 7 in that Evansville game. One of his best performances of the year. Kentucky probably has to be a little shocked by, you know, remembering what Kansas was like and what they're seeing right now. An entirely different ball club. I'd have to give the psychological edge to Kansas on that one. Place to go. Kentucky waiting for him with three men on the defensive end. Game really hasn't settled in yet. In yeah, regard to what kind of an offensive flow that can be established. The Fleet Center in Boston, second round of the East Region, and a trip to the Sweet 16 awaits the winner between Purdue and Miami. Let's take a look at the brackets here in Boston. Temple already has their invitation with wins over Kent State and a 10-point upset over Cincinnati. Purdue beat Texas in round one. Miami knocked off Lafayette. And hi, everybody. I'm Craig Buller, Jack, along with Rolando Blackman. It's been a long march for Miami to the top, but the man who's led that march row is their head coach, Leonard Hamilton. Terrific job. Well, he's done a great job because over the last five seasons, he's led them to winning seasons. And this year, a 20-game win season for the first time since 1965. But one of the guards who's helped them with that success is shooting guard Johnny Helmsley. This kid has a hair trigger jumper. Anytime you leave him open, you are in danger of igniting a fire under Johnny Helmsley. He gets a lot of fun with the crowd, and every time he gets an opportunity to shoot these shots, but he is a good one and an all Big East first teamer. You talk about Purdue, they knocked off Texas in round one, but you got to put that game in the category of ugly. Ro 
know the two teams combined for 35 turnovers. I'll tell you what, it was ugly to us, but I'll tell you, you asked Coach Gene Cady, and it wasn't ugly to him. He's led by a player by the name of Brian Cardinal. And I tell you what, Greg, he is a guy who leads all of college basketball in floor burns, and he's a scrappy and a very tough basketball player. He's a guy who does a great job for Purdue as an igniter, and he's also the all-time Purdue Steels leader. He is a key to tonight's game. Well, the head coach of Purdue, Gene Cady, 19th season, making his seventh straight NCAA tournament appearance and on the floor tonight for the Boilermakers, Cardinal McQuay Cornell and the backcourt of Eldridge and Mayfield. Basically a three-guard lineup for Purdue, and Cornell is second in Big Ten in three-point field goals, nearly three a game. The head coach for Miami, we talked about him, Leonard Hamilton, ninth season, Big East Coach of the Year, making his second straight NCAA tournament. And on the court tonight for the Hurricanes, Tim James, Johnny Helmsley, and Mario Bland, his front court. And in the backcourt, Vern Jennings and John Salmons. And keep your eye on Timmy James, co Big East Player of the Year, averaging just under 19 a game. And the men in stripes today, Dick Cartmel, Duke Edsall, and Frank Bassoni. We're at the Fleet Center, Boston. Miami comes in with a 23 and 6 record. They knocked off Lafayette in round one, Rolando. First NCAA tournament win, by the way, in school history, while Purdue advanced, knocking off Texas Friday night. And a tough game, as we mentioned, with a lot of turnovers, winning by four, 58 54. In the first few minutes right now, we're going to have to check out uh, Tim James to see exactly how he feels. In the last game, he was being hurt by his lower back spasms. So you got to see how his movement is the first few times up and down the court. Now James took only eight shots in that opening round game against Lafayette. Well, it wasn't a bad game for him to have uh, the back spasms. James starts it off a little short on the jumper, but rebounded by Hemsley, who had that hard hand uh, on Friday night. He knocked down nine threes. Sizzling. Around the Salmons. Nice entry pass. Hamilton told us today he wanted to get Bland kind of early in this game involved. And he got involved right there, too. A good play by Miami as they moved the ball around the perimeter and found a, a good and open Bland on the low post. Cardinal. Both teams opening up in man to man defense. The play fumbling down the baseline, and they're going to come up for steps. Turnover coming back the other way for Miami. Just couldn't handle the ball on that play, too. But both teams just seem to be playing man to man defense and getting the basketball exactly where they need to be. Right now, he was trying to get a pass in there, too, but just shuffled his feet just a little bit. Lane at 6'6, with a wide body at 265, putting it down court. Right now, everybody's going to play a lot of attention to Johnny Helmsley. Long jumper by Simons off the mark. McQuay the rebound. Here comes Purdue. There he goes, just playing Cornell. Mayfield to Eldridge on the wing. Bounce pass McQuay. A little soft jumper from eight feet. You can see what a nice pass that is right there from Brian Cardinal coming right into McCoy. But also he did a great job in the seal, the perfect pass right under the defensive arm. He's got a sweet shot, shooting 56% from the floor. And Purdue strikes first, we're up two. Helmsley is doing a very good job of Donnie Helmsley. You can see he's not moving toward the ball as Helmsley keeping a face-to-face -face foot on him. James pops up for the three ball. Off the marks, and James starts off 0 for 2. Nice save as the big guy goes into the stands. Land about two rows deep. Have a nice little advantage right now. Purdue does. Cornell the head fake. Beautiful shot by Cornell. Didn't even need Land on defense on that time. Cornell had a big game against Texas on Friday night. 18 points in 39 minutes. Very, very dangerous. Purdue's leading scorer and a guy who can put the ball on the floor and take it right to the basket. Very good creator and catalyst for Purdue. Miami 0 for 5 to start this game. Jennings now misses the shot 0 for 6. But James rebounds. Hemsley head fake, but he pulled the pivot foot and a turnover. Miami's doing a great job of hustling as see Big Bland goes into the stands and gets the ball right up over through it. No people in his way this time, too, so I guess everybody feels pretty safe. <laughs> 
Bland will take an early seat in Dwayne Wembley, number 34 in. You can see Purdue starts the game two for two, while Miami yet to find the bucket at 0 for 6. We got to find out how James is doing. You never know when you get hurt to try to come back the next day, how your body's going to react. Timing may be just a little bit off. Now he wore a back brace that we saw at shoot around uh, during those one hour shoot arounds on Thursday. There was some concern, but. They checked him out today and things look good. Cardinal, nice dump off, baseline, shot wouldn't go from McQuay. And here comes Miami, still looking for their first bucket. Brian Cardinal, though, such an excellent passer. Not a good pass right there by Jennings. Trying to come on up the court now, passing the basketball. With the You're going to find Helmsley in this game. Be a good matchup also to keep an eye on Eldridge and Helmsley. Whistle as the shot went up. Got a foul on Alan Eldridge right now, trying to guard Helmsley. Very difficult matchup right there, too. It's a good one to watch to see if Eldridge can slow down Helmsley because he's not even playing any help defense right now. Anytime Helmsley moves around the court, he's following. So the first foul whistled in this game goes to Eldridge of Purdue. Johnny Helmsley, a junior from Baltimore. And that breaks a drought of about three and a half minutes. And there's, here's Johnny, that's right, 31 points, three boards, and a team record nine of 12 from the three-point line. Boy, he had fun, fun with that Lafayette crowd. That was sure was a pleasure for all of us to watch also, too, because, Craig, he was sizzling. He was going back and forth, bantering back and forth with the Lafayette crowd, just having a, a real good time. Three shot foul for Hemsley as he was fouled trying to shoot up that three, and he makes all three. So quickly, Miami cuts that four point deficit down to one. Cornell holds it up for Mayfield. The trailer is Cardinal. Up top, Cardinal, top of the key, Eldridge on the wing, drives on Jennings and a whistle. This is going to be a very good matchup, though, because we have some nice, experienced guards in Eldridge going to the basket. He's very, very strong and takes off very, very quickly. Jennings just, just could not move his feet fast enough to cut him off. But we've got some nice guards in here in, in, in Cornell, also Eldridge, Jennings. We've got out some very, very good players. Cornell from long range. Last touched by Miami. Purdue basketball. 16-28 to go, first half, and Purdue leads 4-3. Very interesting to the size of the players in this game. Everybody seems to be around the 6-7, 6-8, six, 6-8 six, eight, six, eight mode. Not too big of players. Way backs in. From behind was James. Wembley also in the, uh, in the vicinity. And the foul, I believe, on Wembley. Miami. Emmy Award winner John Larroquette returns to television as Royal Payne, an innkeeper with an attitude. Don't miss the series premiere of Payne. Special guest star Chuck Norris, Monday after Raymond, right here on CBS. <laughs> Wembley picks up his first, and McQuay at the line. Battles in. His third point. McQuay show did a good job in the last game against Texas, though as he was in there commanding in the low post, making up shots and also getting an opportunity to rebound for his team. An essential part of the Purdue win. James pulls down the rebound. Jennings to James, and he hits. Excellent communication between teammates right there, too. You can hear James saying, back, back, back. Jennings hit him right in the flow. Two-point bucket, a long jumper, but just had his foot inside the line. So it's all tied at five with just under 16 minutes left in the opening half. This is a strong man-to-man -man going on here. Cardinal feeds baseline. Mayfield back up to McQuay, trying to drive by Bland. Oh, look at that defense by Miami. They're swarming. Six on the shot, five, four, Cardinal swings up a right. Oh, Baker! <laughs> Did he call Bank on that one? He doesn't care, he's still collecting. Oh. Cardinal <laughs> averaging 11 points a game. And that's, again, that's, those are the shots that you call when you're playing cat and mouse out on the, on the, oh, on the, definitely. On the court. <laughs> and Katie even gets a smile as we go to break. Purdue leads Miami, eight to five.
Well, on the previous play, Martin Cleves going in with a great pass to A.J. Granger. Good positioning by Michigan State. Granger picked up the foul. It's a two-point Mississippi lead. The South region is set for Thursday night play, and uh, it's the exception rather than the rule. The top seeds coming through Auburn, Ohio State, St. John's, Maryland, double interaction exclusively on CBS. Out west, the story a little different. Connecticut, Iowa, Florida against the Gonzaga, who punched out second seeded Stanford yesterday. And with all due respect to my friend Clark Kellogg, I think Auburn is on its way to a matchup with St. John's. I think they're the least publicized top seed in NCAA tournament history since the field expanded to 64 teams. I know you like St. John's. I do like St. John's. I really like the versatility of that ball club. They're very athletic. Get on the boards. Bootsy Thornton, Barkley, Artez, St. John's. I really like what Jarvis is doing. Flanagan, a leaner. Just that tip by Smith out to Carter, so important, the intangibles that Jason Smith as a senior brings to the game. This is what Michigan State wants, though. Force Ole Miss into a half-court offensive set. It's not their strength. Well, plus Michigan State does a great job with that sort of a matchup zone. They really do a good job of keeping it tight and getting to them. Oh, Smith, a floater in the lane. And that's a bailout bucket, really. He's four out of six from the floor. Ranger, not there. Well, Jason Smith has such hops, and he's been bothered by a stress fracture for two years at Mississippi. White, Carter again, the long rebound. Smith doesn't practice. He hasn't practiced between games once the season's gotten started for the bulk of a year and a half. There he is again, right on cue, using the window. Well, Smith not practicing, but I'm sure he's doing everything else, watching tapes, working out in the pool, perhaps, lifting weights, everything to compensate for not being able to have that practice time. Antonio Smith with a big pitch for Kelly. Rejected by Smith. He's a little winded. I think he needs to get out of the game. He's done it on both ends of the floor. He just asked the coach to <laughs> give him a little breather. There he is, finally into your picture. He had your old teammate's tongue out, but uh, not for the same reason. <laughs> Begging for a little help from the bench. Raheem Lockhart, who did bang knees with the Spartan earlier, will return. Darian Brown also set to return for Ole Miss. Morris Peterson will also check in for the Spartans. Now that looked like a tired shot. Yeah. After it's rebounded by Hicks. Yeah, anytime he started fading away, shooting off of one leg, that's a sign of, of fatigue. And uh, Rod Barnes is going to get a timeout for him to value this possession. This is a timeout taken for Jason Smith. Well, Jason Smith has just been everything for Ole Miss early in the game. If you notice here, a little fake into the lane. He's a great slasher off balance. Next offensive, offensive uh, possession, there's Smith again, fighting in the inside. He's a, he's a scrapper. And then on the defense, on the other end, said get it out of here it's not happening and also he's a little bit fatigued there is the timeout will really help Jason Smith give him an oxygen mass over there <laughs> he deserves this rest Ole Miss with uh, seven rebounds in the game on the offensive glass Michigan State with just one, and of course, that's been Michigan State's calling card. Tops in the Big Ten all year, up around the top nationally. Trailing Auburn most of the year in offensive rebounds, leading to putbacks. They've not been able to get them today. Led by Antonio Smith, who's strong on the board in Friday's game. Lockhart. Clearing out with the elbow, Dick Paparo tabs him. Player control foul, it goes the other way. Well, in the last play, you see Lockhart does not have the foot speed, but I don't know. He made a pretty good drop step move right there. I'm not sure where the foul came, but apparently the referee thought that the elbow was a little too strong. Yeah, and see, that's exactly the kind of foul that, that Ole Miss cannot absorb too many of. As you see the rebounding story. Today, though, it's been a little different. Spartans with only one. Look at Jason Harrison. 
frustrating the team cleans a little bit right now. Forced a bad shot. Hicks got a deflection on the offensive glass. Antonio Smith fouled on the way up. And this is where Rod Barnes knows he's going to run into some trouble. In among traffic. Loose ball situations and fouls against uh, the smaller front line. Well, we talked about Antonio Smith's ability to create some space in the paint for himself. There's one offensive rebound. There's Smith going up strong, gathering himself. Now he'll be at the line for two. Clearly, Flanagan hacked him. Jason Flanagan picking up the foul, which uh, they would prefer. They can afford to lose some guard guard play, but not their front line. Third on the all time list and rebounding behind Johnny Green, who played back in the 50s, and Brett Kelser, the silent assassin who joined up with Magic Johnson. Special K. You think more of him as uh, the recipient of those quality dishes from Johnson, but an outstanding rebounder as well. Yeah, that was David Thompson back in the 74 for North Carolina State with the alley oop. And then when the dunk came back, it was Special K, Kelser from Magic Johnson. Yeah, he was the original. Mark Kellogg uh, got more headlines, perhaps, than Special K. And uh, Larry Keenan, another uh, yeah. Special K of an era at what was Memphis State. Playing in at 72. It was Larry Finch that delivered for him. They made it to the finals, you'll recall, back in 1973 in the NCAA finals. Carter with six on the shot clock. Pulled down by Andre Hudson. Cleves has him in motion. Peterson, that's a block against Jason Harrison. Barnes is living. Now they're calling an undercut. Now remember, Harrison's only 5-5. I mean, you could call perhaps an undercut almost any time against Jason. That's right, Jason Harrison. He's going to get there, as you see in the transition game. Look how quick he gets over. Only 5-5. Five, five. I'm not sure about that call. That was a pretty good defensive position from what I could see. Again, once you've established the, you have a right to it as well. I mean, it's not Jason's fault that he's five foot five. It is not. And he had his feet <laughs> planted and sitting there ready to take the charge as he looks at Morris Peterson and said you got to wait with oh, Rod Barnes with the jacket off now I think the bigger concern though for Tom Izzo in this game is how they handle the frenetic flying of this uh, Ole Miss defense they come at you from so many different angles and to this point Cleves has handled it pretty well well and the thing is Ole Miss will continue to add the pressure so it's not like you break it early in the game and you solve the problem because it's a continuous pressure from Ole Miss. Marion Brown not there Hicks and Carter fight for it lose it. Antonio Smith setting those high picks. Notice how Darian Brown is there to help, but Cleve still knocks down the deuce. 20 to 18, six in the game for Martin. Muslim first name that means unshakable, and he's been that throughout this season. He'll need to be the rest of the way today. Reach in foul off the double team against Andre Hudson. And to wave that off. It won't be against uh, Hudson. It goes against Antonio Smith instead. That's good news. It would have been the third on Hudson. Martin knocking one down. Ball tipped up for grabs. Cornell gathers it. Under 12 minutes left in the opening half. The Dubai three. Offensive rebounds a story. Miami has five. And Purdue yet to get an offensive board, but still with that three-point lead. McQuay, jump shot. Another but net. You know the thing about this, Craig, what I see is that uh, Purdue's doing a very good job simply because they have some very good guards. We keep talking about guard play and being able to set your teammates up and put them in position to score. Baseline, Houston battles. Tyler tried to tip. Bland comes into the picture in the paint. He tips it. And it's pulled down by Purdue. Nice interior defense right there by Purdue. Loose ball. Houston's got a one on two. He pulls up. Kind of a fast shot right there. And a 
another fresh 35 and we hit the 11. Double dribble. And Houston takes a hop and a skip and a turnover. That's the excitement of the play right there, Dose. But watch as Houston goes on in and the defense right there by Purdue. As we get into the mad scramble all throughout. You can see Bland. Great defense by Purdue. Everyone stays right on the ball until Stevens gets an opportunity to get it and throw it back out. Fresh legs for Miami as James and Hemsley checks back in. Also back on the floor is Wembley, number 34. Miami shooting three of 13 from the floor. You can see their three point shots. That's why they're down. Not, not making its way down either. Really, that's why they're down in this game, though, because each and every time they have an open opportunity, they're missing. And also, when it gets close to the basket, Purdue is doing a very good job of team defense and stopping Miami's thrust. Yeah, three for 13, two point range, and three of 18 overall. Into James slides down the lane. Stevens played good defense. Excellent play right there by Stevens. Nice, very, very good timing on James. He had the inside position and made up for it quickly. Cornell puts the ball on the floor, slapped away. Jennings, great hands, and it was last touched then as Cornell lost it. He touched it, and it's going to be Miami basketball. Now, now watch this now, going right on in, but Stevens is taking his time, timing the play, keeping the body control, not getting on top of James, getting the block. Very good play right there by Stevens. Not picking up the foul and still getting a good block. Six turnovers now on Purdue. James going against Mayfield. Out to James, who's been held to three points. Halfway through the first half. Salmons kicks. Three second and a three-second violation before Jennings could get the shot off. Now as the ball was moved around the perimeter too, Wembley thought the shot was going to go up, and uh, Jennings held it, but he was in there parked just a little bit too long. On the fourth turnover, whistled on Miami. Mayfield will walk it up across midcourt. Picked up by Jennings. Now Eldridge swings it wide. Nice pass inside Robinson. He's battle against Salmons and tough shot. You can see that nice interior attack though that Purdue is employing. They're really looking for each other, especially right down the low post. 7-0 run for Purdue. As Robinson gets his first bucket. 17-10. Eldridge is doing a very good job also on Hemsley. Salmons takes it strong, count it, and he'll have a three-point opportunity. That's an excellent play right there. Everybody was playing some strong man-to-man -man defense. Everybody had their back turned, not seeing the ball. And Salmons took a great opportunity to take the ball right to the basket. Robinson picks up his first. That's a good heads-up, though, by the freshman. Being able to see exactly what the opportunity he had and took it right to the basket. Salmons will shoot one. Pretty good free throw shooter at just under 72%. And a three point play. Miami down by four. Out to Robinson. Quay. Quay trying to post up. Good deep play by Miami though. Oh. Stepped on over and back to Stevens. Stevens stepped right on the line, but just good overplay defense that time by Miami. Knocked everybody off the block, wasn't able to get the ball there, and also around the perimeter. Good pressure. Seven turnovers for Purdue as Cardinal will check back in. And out goes number 21, Cameron Stevens. Also, Cornell back in. Robinson sits down. Now both Robinson and Stevens Rowe are productive. Both hit a bucket in a couple of minutes on the floor. Oh, they were very, very positive in what they had to do. Definitely came in and, and did a positive job. Emsley swings it around. Jennings jumps it up. Too strong. Land tried to grab the rebound, but McQuay controls. I mean, just not very good at the field goals right now, too. They're getting some shots up there, but, but there seems to be just a lid on the, on the hoop. Inside the Cardinal. He takes a little bounce step. Salmon's blocked it from behind. That starts a break for Miami. Jennings thought about it. Now Salmon's 
Two-point shot, no. McQuay working both ends. Another rebound. Emsley had that hot hand. Rolanda only one field goal attempt so far in this game. No shot. The Brian Cardinal setting up right at the low post is very good. You can see now he beats Bland, but Salmons comes right over and gets the block, negating Brian Cardinal on that attempt. Good team defense right there. You've got to be able to gang defense if you're going to stop Purdue on the interior. Foul goes to Vernon Jennings, his second. Both coaches freely uh, substituting here. As Herkoff checks in, number 11. Field goal 7 of 11 for Purdue, Miami. Orlando 4 of 22 shots. They've had, they've doubled up the shot attempts. Yeah, they've got to get themselves some better shots though, but. Eldridge missed, rebound to Miami. That was an excellent move by Eldridge. All he, all he forgot to do was finish. Over to Salmons, they feed down low to Tim James, working on Cardinal. Stops, shoots, hits. That's the advantage you have right there. If you get Tim James moving into the post and not being a stationary position, it makes it harder for Purdue to help. Well, James Rowe is a tremendous leaper of the Big East high jump champ, seven feet, one and a quarter. Exactly. That's why you've got to get him on a moving roll. That way everybody is moving around and not having him stationary where he could take advantage of Brian Cardinal guarding him. Miami down two with a chance to tie. Simmons across midcourt. Behind the back dribble, splits it up, dumps underneath. Good position at James. Got the roll off the front of the iron. It's an excellent play, and also a good play by James to clear some space to give him a passing angle. We're tied at 17 as Miami's gone on a 7-0 run. Kirkhoff guarded there closely by Hemsley. Working around the Cardinal on the wing. 13 on the shot. Inside McQuay. Last touched by Purdue. It'll be Miami basketball. And a timeout. Miami has battled back. It's all tied at 17 in Boston. Kentucky tied with just under four minutes left in, down in New Orleans. Wally Zerbiak, the hero of the Miami-Utah game. I guess it's probably not sunk in yet, huh? No, it hasn't. Watching these two teams play, thinking we're going to play one of these two teams with all their storied past is going to be extra special, and I'm really looking forward to it. Quick rise to start them for you. I know you came out to scout these two teams, but you've spent more time signing autographs for little kids. Have you even seen them? I love it. You know, that's what it's all about. I have no problem making kids happy, and, you know, I'll watch this game on TV if I have to. I don't know if you've heard the song uh, Meet Me in St. Louis, but it's pretty appropriate. Wally, thanks. Jimmy. Bonnie, why don't you hum us a few bars there? <laughs> oh, come on. You know I have a terrible voice. Let Billy do it. He can't sing either, but, you know, he's sitting next to you. All right, Billy. You know, uh, I'll get off of that one. But how about how about Wally Serbiak? Does it conjure up a few? Uh, 1979. I thought that Larry might be Bird. on your mind. Yep. Well, how, how about the stories that are developing? Steve Alford, you know, took Indiana national championship team. His dad's coaching with him. Kid from Indiana. Uh, so many neat stories here developing in this tournament. Good follow through by Padgett, just didn't drop, didn't get up over the front of the rim. People may look at that and say Miami's going to a, a regional, but that is uh, that is going to be a story you're going to be hearing about all week after the two games that Wally Serbiak played here in New Orleans. 43 to lead them in an opening round victory over the Pac-10 Washington Huskies. 24 more today to knock out last year's finalist, Utah. And another block by McGlure. Well, I'm so impressed with McGlure, the way he's come around this year, really giving Kentucky what they needed from him in the low post. Smith is a good shooter from there. Yep. And off the screen, had an open look. Three-pointer. At 17 against Ole Miss, that's doing pretty well today. His high for the year, but he can score. Gregory Jumper. One of the better.